ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything when you invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray وكل ضلالة في النار and every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire ثم أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam there comes a couple narrations that highlight for us the vastness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and the fact that no matter what sins we may have that those doors of tawbah those doors of getting that mercy is always open an abi huraira radiyallahu anhu an an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam qal kana rajulan yusrif ala nafsihi falamma hadarahu al-mawt qal li banihi idha ana muttu fa'ahriquni thumma athanuni thumma dharuni fi al-rih فوالله لئن قد لئن قدر علي ربي ليعذبني عذابا ما عذبه احد فلما مات فعل به ذلك فامر الله الارض فقال اجمعي ما فيك منه ففعلت فاذا هو قائم فقال ما حملك على على ما صنعت قال يا ربي خشيتك فغفر له وقال غيره مخافتك يا رب this hadith that we find which is authentic the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he narrated about a man who used to do sinful deeds in another narration a man lam ya'mal khayran qat a man who never did any good he never did any good but in this narration a man who used to do sinful deeds and when death came to him he said to his sons when i die burn me crush me and scatter my powder in the air for by allah if allah has control over me he will give me a punishment that he has never punished anybody with in the world before me so when he died his sins his sons did as he was commanded when his when he died his sons did what his father asked them although this is not permissible for us to do even if someone had a wasiyah or a will commanding that they be cremated or the likes were not to follow those things because they go against the sharia but in this story he said his sons did what they did they burned him they crushed him and they scattered his ashes across the air allah ordered the earth saying collect all of these particles so it did so and behold the man was standing up allah asked him what made you do this what made you ask your sons to bury you and crush you and spread you over the air he replied oh my lord i was afraid of you So Allah forgave him in another narration the man said out of fear of you oh my lord Combining with it this other story and then we'll talk about the fawaid the benefits that we can learn from this Abu Huraira he said Sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam yaqul kana rajulani fi bani Israil mutafiyayni 
فكان فكان أحدهما يذنب والآخر مجتهد في العبادة فكان لا يزال المجتهد يرى الآخر على الذنب فيقول أقصر فوجده يوما على ذنب فقال له أقصر قال خلني وربي أبعثت علي رقيبا فقال والله لا يغفر الله لك أو قال لا يدخلك الله الجنة فقبض أرواحهما فأجتمع عند رب العالمين فقال لهذا المجتهد أكنت بي عالما أو كنت على أو كنت على ما في يدي قادرة وقال للمذنب اذهب فادخل الجنة برحمتي وقال للآخر اذهبوا به إلى النار this hadith which we have in the Sunnah of Abi Dawood and Shaykh Al-Albani, Sahahu, he agreed it as authentic and Sahih. The Prophet Sallallahu he was heard to have said, there were two men from Bani Israel who were striving for the same goal. One of them would commit sins, while the other of them was always busying himself in the best of his... One of them was uh, exerting himself in worship, and the other one would sin. So two of these men doing these things. Every time the one who was going in worship, exceeding in worship, he would see the sinner. He would say, Aqsir, hold back, stop sinning, do not do these things. And he would advise him. Until one day he saw this Muznid, the one who was making sin after sin. And he told him, Aqsir. He said to him, hold back, do not sin. So the man he said to him, the man he said to him, leave me alone with my Lord. Leave me to myself. Don't bother advising me. Have you been sent as a watcher over me? Have you been sent as one who just comes and has to ride my back? So this man who was the mujtahid, the one who was always going in the way of ibadah in terms of worship, he said, I swear by Allah, Allah will not forgive you your sins. Or he said, he will not admit you to paradise. So then their souls will be taken back to Allah. And they met together with the Lord of the world. And Allah said to the man who told this man, Allah will not forgive you, or Allah will not let you enter Jannah. He said to him, did you have knowledge over me? Or did you have power over that which I have in my hand? Did you have something over me where you could decree what you told this man? So he said to the man who sinned, go and enter my paradise by my mercy. And he told the other man, who was always, again, he was the mushtahs in ibadah. He was always in the ways of, of pleasing Allah, in the ways of worshipping Allah. He told the, the, the angels um, by him, he told him, the one who was sinning, go and take him to the hellfire. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he added by him in whose hand is my soul, he spoke a word in which he destroyed himself in this world and the next. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we often look at the sinner, as being so bad. And we always, look, we always look at them as thinking they may not be forgiven. Or we condemn him or her. Or we think of them as automatically inferior. Because we see them doing a great sin that we may not be committing. Some are arrogant, considering themselves better than others. Just by knowing that another person's sins are visible or known to the people. Strangely, many times... The self-declared pious one, the one who says he has taqwa, the one who thinks he's righteous, is the one who's commonly wrong in this matter and commonly disobeying Allah with falling into these matters. The one who is most guilty of this at times is the pious ones. So here is a warning and a reminder about two important affairs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger brought to teach us in these two narrations. Allah said, الَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرِ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشِ إِلَّا اللَّمَمْ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ وَاسِعُ الْمَغْفِرَةِ هُوَ أَعْنَمُ بِكُمْ إِذْ أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَإِذْ أَنْتُمْ جِنَّةٌ فِي بَطُونِ أُمِّهَاتِكُمْ فَلَا تُزَكُّ أَنْفُسُكُمْ هُوَ أَعْنَمُ بِمَنْ اتَّقَى So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, those who avoid the great sins and the, and the fawahish and the illegal intercourse type of sins, except the small faults, Verily, your Lord is of vast forgiveness. He knows you well, that He created you from the earth. Adam And when you were fetuses in the wombs of your mothers, so ascribe not purity to yourself. Don't puff yourself up. Don't write yourself to be of the best of people, or the most righteous of people, or the most pious of people. Allah knows best who fears Him and keeps His, keeps his duty to Him. Allah knows best. Huwa a'lamu bi man 
Allah knows best who keeps his duty to him, who struggles to please him, who struggles to obey him, who struggles to stay away from sins and disobedience. Allah is the one who is mindful of this. So we learn this lesson from this ayah that we should never ascribe purity to ourselves until Allah grants us that title on the day of resurrection. عن حارث بن وهب he narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said ألا أنبئكم بأهل الجنة كل ضعيف متضعف he said the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said shall I not tell you about the people of paradise it is every weak person and every oppressed person the one who is weak the one who is oppressed the one who is not capable these people they will be from the inhabitants of Jannah ثم قال ألا أنبئكم بأهل النار he said, shall I not tell you of the people of the hellfire? It is every harsh, haughty or proud, arrogant person. So we have in this narration again, some light for us to realize that we should never be arrogant, no matter how good we're doing, or what we may be upon, and what we may be see or know about others in terms of their sins. Never grant yourself Never grant yourself piousness or piety, and at the same time, never puff yourself up to think you're better than others, because Allah knows best who is the, the one who's better. That the one who's most pious, the most beneficent, the one blessed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best in his eyes is the one who has the most taqwa. And on the authority of Abdullah radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال غرة من كبر. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded us in this hadith saying that the person who has an Adam's weight, a mustard seed, and again, this is not something you can even see or feel if it was in your hand or on your skin or on your head. That light, if you have that much of a grain of arrogance or pride, you will not enter Jannah. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَسَلَّمُ إِخْوَانِ وَخَاتِ فِي اللَّهِ It is a sign of faith to hate sin without a doubt. And it's a sign of iman to hate sin and to see those sins being carried out by other people without a doubt. And it is upon us to command what is good. الْأَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفُ وَالْنَهِيَ عَنْ مُنْكَرُ to command what is good and what is righteous, what is clean, what is pure, and to forbid what is wrong and what is evil and what is filthy, without a doubt. But Allah, you never know what He has in store. The one you see sinning and you look down upon, He may be from the best of Jannah because Allah may guide him to something good. And the one who is good, and he takes that for granted, and he doesn't ask Allah to make his heart firm on this deen, and he looks down upon the others, then he may be from the people of the hellfire. As we saw in these stories, how someone who's pious, someone who was an abid in his life, a worshiper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can destroy himself with a single word, or with a single phrase, or with a single action, or even with that single thought, that kibir, that pride, and that arrogance. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, قال أن قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم هو الصادق المستوق إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك فينفق فيه الروح ويأمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وأمره وأجله وعمله وشقي أو سعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم ليعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينها وبينها إلا غراء فيصدق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم ليعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينها وبينها إلا غراء فيصدق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه بخاري ومسلم رافق محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم it was reported that he said in, in this hadith, Ibn Mas'ud, he said, and he is the truthful one and the believed one. He narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Verily the creation of one of you was brought together in the womb of his mother for 40 days as a nukfa, as a drop. Then it becomes an alaka, a blood clot, for the same amount of days, 40 days. So this makes 80. Then it becomes a piece of flesh for 40 days, the mudra. That's 120 and this is when Allah sends the angel after four months, 120 days. 
Allah sends the angel to blow the soul into the womb, into the fetus in the womb of its mother. And he has them write down four matters. To write down the rizq, their sustenance, whether they'll be rich or poor. Their lifespan, how long they will live. Their actions, whether they will be the people who do the actions of good or the actions of bad. And to write down shaqiyun al sa'id, whether they will be happy or sad, yani whether they will go to Jannah or be from the people of the hellfire. The hadith continues by the one other than whom there is no one worthy of worship. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger of Allah, he swore by him, he said, Verily, there is one of you who may do the actions of the people of Jannah until what is between him. Yani, and this is according to the perception of the people. The people see him as doing the actions of the people of Jannah. So much so that he's so close to it as if he came within a hand span of it. And then what is decreed comes upon him or takes over him. And he does the actions of the people of the hellfire. So he will enter it. And verily, one performs the actions of the people of the hellfire. Again, according to what it looks like to the people. You may see a person who's for some reason this person, their sins are always exposed even if they try to hide them. Until there is an arm's length between that person and Jahannam. And then what has been written for him overtakes him. Then he does the actions of the people of Jannah so he will enter it. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, never despair at the mercy of Allah. Always keep striving and never look down on what others may be doing of sins. Advise, but never claim that you're better than anybody. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam we share two stories narrated from our Prophet Sallallahu the first one was a man who said when I die he told his sons burn me crush me and spread me across the air across the ocean because I don't want I know if Allah gets a hold of me that he's going to give me a punishment he's never given anybody else so his sons did so. And when, uh, uh, so his sons did what he asked. And then Allah, he brought him back. He ordered the earth to bring that person back together till he was standing as the man he was. And he asked him, why did you do this? He said, min khashyataka. Min khashyataka, min khawfataka. I feared you. I feared you. And so Allah, he forgave him. And the other story we shared was the two from Bani Israel. One doing sins, the other doing good, doing the acts of ibadah. Who would always tell the sinner when he saw him, stop, hold short. Now we are supposed to advise. We are supposed to advise. Ad-deen al-nasiha. The religion is sincere advice. We're supposed to advise one another. Call one another to good. Always call to good. This is what we're commanded to do. But there's ways and there's manners. Until this man one day, day said, Aqsir, hold back your sin. So the man angrily, he told him, Abu'uthtu alayya raqiba, have you been sent as a watcher over me? Khalini wa rabbi, leave me alone between me and my Lord. Leave me and my Lord to mark to ourselves. So the man, he told him, La yadkhuluk Allah al-jannah. Lam yadkhuluk Allah al-jannah. Allah will not enter you into paradise. And he will not forgive you. So Allah, he sent the sinner by his mercy to jannah. And this, uh, afwan, he sent... Yeah, the sinner by his mercy to Jannah, and he sent the one who was, the one worshipping him in this life and the likes, he had him taken to the hellfire. So we see in these two stories, that a pious person may disgrace a sinner, and make him despair at Allah's mercy, and sometimes swear that Allah will not be merciful with him. And we know that only Allah knows what he will do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادَ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الله says what means say O oh, عبادي O oh, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves all of the slaves كل بن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون every child of Adam sins and errors and makes mistakes but the best of them is the one who makes tawbah Allah he said O oh, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves by committing sins by doing evil deeds do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. Truly, He is oft forgiving, all merciful. 
ثم قال الله يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة مسوحة عسى ربكم أن يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار الله said oh you who believe turn to Allah with sincere repentance it may be that your Lord will remit, remit you from your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow يعني جنة on that day that Allah will not disgrace the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم من تحتها الأنهار يوم لا يخذل الله النبي والذين آمنوا معه نورهم يسعى بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم يقولون ربنا أتمم لنا نورنا واغفر لنا إنك على كل شيء قدير that day where Allah he will not disgrace the Prophet وسلم, nor those who believe with him their light will run forward before them and with their records of their deeds in their right hands and they will say our Lord Keep perfect for us this light. Keep perfect our light for us and do not put it off until we cross over the sarat, the bridge, the slippery bridge over the hellfire that every believer will have to pass in order to make it to Jannah. May Allah grant us a quick speed over that sirat and grant us forgiveness. Verily, you are all able to do all things. It was narrated from Anas ibn Malik that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he entered upon a young man who was dying. He asked the man, how are you doing? And how do you feel? He told him, there are the, he said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I have hope in Allah, but I fear my sins. من في مثل هذا الموطن إلا أعطاه الله ما يرجو وأمنه مما يخاف. The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said these two things: hoping for Allah's reward and fearing Allah's punishment because of your sins. They do not coexist in the heart of the person in a situation like this. But that Allah will give you what you hope for. That rahma, that maghfira, granting you his re- acceptance of your repentance. Granting you forgiveness, giving, making you from the people of Jannah, and He will protect you from what you fear, which is the punishment of your sins. These two must always be balanced in the life of the Muslim. You cannot just talk about hope for Rahmah and Allah's forgiveness and the like, and never talk about fearing His punishment. And you cannot just talk about fear and make everything about fright and fearing Allah's punishment and the hellfire and not mention Allah's mercy. They must be balanced. The hope in Allah's forgiveness and mercy and fear of His punishment for our sins. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Allah says, what means, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah by doing what He ordained, abstaining and stay away from what He forbid, as He should be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam. That Islam, that tawheed that you hold on to, this is your saving grace on that day of resurrection. This is the ones who will be in a successful situation. So the bottom line, my brothers and sisters in Islam, Fear Allah wherever you may be, at all times. Fear Him and stop listening to those ones who say, focus on the maghfira, focus on the mercy, focus on the good. You have to balance the both. Fear Allah wherever you may go. Always affirm the tawheed that we were taught by Rasulullah sallallahu and the aqidah of the salaf al-salih of the righteous predecessors so that we worship our lord the way we were commanded to by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how those first generations did so never la taqnatu min rahmatillah do not despair for Allah's mercy he is infinite in his mercy sins up to the levels of the ha- of the skies of the clouds sins like the foam of the ocean Allah will come very easily, very mercifully to forgive those if you go and you repent to Him. Always pray for that firmness and that guidance. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qulubin ala deenik. Always pray, oh, changer of the hearts, make my heart, make our hearts firm upon this deen. Hold back your tongue, tie it. Do not say anything which could destroy your dunya and your akhirah. Hold your tongue and refrain it. Especially as we prepare for Ramadan, we will keep mentioning this point and bring a khutbah just on this issue because this leads many people to destructions as our Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Repent, repent, repent. Always make tawbah and never hold back. 
Qala Rasulullah, At-ta'abu min al-dhamb, kaman la dhamb lah. The one who repents from a sin, as is if, it says as if they did not do the sin. This is how infinite Allah's mercy and acceptance of tawbah is. And balanced always, the hope for Allah's mercy and fearing His punishment. Always balance the two. Do not let one outweigh the other. Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, and we'll, we'll end with this. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he said that <clears throat> in your life, you're like a bird. Uh, imagine the, the, the lifespan is like the bird. The head of the bird is Islam. Does a bird with no head have any life? It doesn't. And this is the method that we should take. Islam is our life. Islam is our, our being. Islam is our success on the day of resurrection. But it has to be how Allah and His Messenger وسلم, brought it to us. So if that head is cut off, you have nothing. But then the wings of the bird, for the one who has Islam, the wings of the bird are hope in Allah's mercy and fearing His punishment. Can you see a bird flapping with one wing? It won't fly. The birds, the birds, both of their wings have to be balanced in order for it to fly and fly gracefully. Balance, hoping for Allah's mercy and fearing His punishment. And may Allah make us from those who are successful in this. Allahumma <laughs> fillil muslimin wal muslimat wal mu'minin wal mu'minat wal ahya'i minhum wal amwad innaka anta sami'un qalibun mujibu al-da'awad ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaneen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabiyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in